Chapter 28 Sorry we're late, Shade. The outlaw with the dark hair and wide smile stepped through the hatch in the specter's side and onto its pectoral fin. Eel. Thought you'd never show. Shade strolled out of the elevator. Five minutes earlier, and you could have said goodbye to Doc. No! Eel cried with disbelief, bounding onto the edge of the moon pool. More outlaws spilled out of the hatch. All not much older than me. Where's he now? Pretty demanded, pushing through the others with his long braid swishing like a sun-bleached rope. Taking a walk on the sea floor, Shade replied. Pa drew Zoe and me back into the fold of settlers. Weapons drawn, Raj and Jibby moved to the edge of the group, but they'd be no match in a shootout. The outlaws were armed and positioning themselves atop the specter and along the rim of the moon pool. Pretty scowled at the dark water. Drowning ain't enough, not after what he did. And here I thought my news might improve your mood, Shade said dryly. An outlaw sniggered, revealing a mouthful of sharpened teeth. I recognized him from the airlock in the sunken rig. I wasn't surprised to see that his arm was in a sling. One look from Pretty striped the grin from the guy's face. Guess he wasn't as scary as his teeth made him seem. Or else under that cool surface, Pretty was even scarier. Eel! Shade pointed at the viewpoint on the wall. Bust that! Heading across the wet room, Eel passed Gemma, who was standing apart from the cluster of settlers. As he pressed his hands to the screen, he flashed her a dimpled smile. You're Gemma. I'd know you anywhere. She ignored him. Done, he called to Shade. Do the elevator too, Shade said. We need a head start. Eel gave Gemma a sidelong look, as if he wanted to tell her something. Now, Shade ordered, which sent Eel hustling to the elevator, where he placed his palm on the panel. Shade smiled at the settler's confusion. Electromagnetic pulse. Very handy. With the tip of his head, he sent Eel back to the sub. The ranger should be here soon enough to let you all out, he told the settlers. He paused by Ma. Want to keep them safe. Stay in the ocean. Move topside, and the wealth will find an excuse to study them. You're wrong, she said. Am I? He asked softly. Skin whining, he cocked his head toward her. When she stumbled back in horror, I saw that a puckered and rectangular scar marred Shade's scalp, like someone had created a flap to access his brain. He shouted to his gang, Am I wrong? In unison, they lifted shirts, pulled off bandanas and hats to reveal their scars. Surgical scars. Eels ran the length of his taut torso, sternum to navel. Pretties wrapped around his ear and disappeared under the collar of his silky jacket. Let's make wake, Shade ordered, only to have Gemma step into his path. That's it? She asked. You're just going to leave? Had my fill of staying in one place. When pain flashed in her eyes, Shade's expression softened. You'll do fine. You've got a survivor's instinct. I don't want to survive. That's all I've been doing, except when I was with you. Her voice caught. Why can't I live? No, he said coldly. I was tempted to draw Gemma back. Shade couldn't have been more clear and more intimidating, but she stood her ground. Because of them? She pointed at the milling outlaws whose expressions ranged from amused to bored. Only Eel looked on with worried concern. You could at least ask them, she added, fidgeting under the weight of Shade's stare. Maybe they won't mind if I... I mind. He said it so harshly, she staggered back as if he'd slapped her. Understand this little girl. Those ugly clam suckers, they're my family now. You're just old business I had to take care of, and did, when I sent you that money. So now, he pointed at her, you're going to keep away from me. She nodded. Though she kept her eyes down, I glimpsed her stricken expression and a flash flood of anger rushed through me. Shade had just confirmed Gemma's worst thoughts about herself, that she wasn't wanted, wasn't special. He didn't seem to care as he turned his attention to his gang. You looking to settle here? He asked, castically. At once the outlaws piled into the specter, all except for Eel and Pretty, who remained on the sub's pectoral fin. Eel watched Gemma retreat to the far wall until Pretty redirected his attention with a cuff to the head. As they disappeared through the hatch, Shade headed for the moon pool without another word to Gemma, or even a glance. Wait, I said straight after him. I saved your life. You owe me. He paused. What do you want? Your word that you won't raid another homestead. The Commonwealth did an injustice. Did you an injustice, not us. Oh, yeah. We'll take the word of an outlaw, Raj scoffed. I met Shade's gaze. I'll take Richard Strade's word. His lips twitched, but he held up his right hand. No homestead, no settlers. There's something else. I crossed to Gemma, who remained stone-faced with her back pressed against the wall. Shade put a fit foot on the rim of the moon pool. My life ain't worth two favors. You're not doing it for me. I pulled a paper and pen from the pouch on her belt and strode to him. You're doing it for her. Sign this. I thrust him at Shade. He didn't move. What is this? An emancipation form. It releases her as a ward of the Commonwealth. When Shade raised his hand, I jerked back, expecting a blow to knock me into tomorrow. His amusement glittered in his eyes, and he tugged the paper from my fingers. 
She was going to stay with you? He asked as he signed. If she wants. I took back the form. A shade pounced into the specter's bumper. I checked the signature. Richard Strayed. Written extra large. I whirled to show Gemma, but saw that she'd slipped behind a large rolling toolbox as if trying to make herself invisible. Jibby stepped forward. Gemma can live with me. Shade's black eyes found him, underscored by an evil blacker scowl. Jibby shuffled back into the cluster of settlers, muttering, just trying to be part of the solution. Inside the plexidome, the gang of young outlaws waved, their expressions ironic, as Shade slammed the hatch shut behind him. When the specter sank beneath the water, Gemma slid down the wall until she was hidden behind the toolbox. Now what? Jibby asked. They really did shut it down, Cheryl said standing in front of the closed elevator doors. The screen is dark, and the button won't light up. As soon as the specter clears the station, Pa says, we get our subs and search for Doc. We all hitched our subs to the inner docking ring, Lars said. With the elevator busted, we can't get to the surface. Ma joined Pa at the window. Grimes said he'd send back a posse of rangers. If they get here soon, her words rolled off. She and Pa shared a grim look. I found Gemma behind the rolling toolbox with her arms wrapped around her legs. Are you okay? Her eyes pulled with tears as she shook her head. I want to be born into a new family. You don't have to be born into a family to be wanted. Stay here with us. You admitted you have a dark gift. Now all the settlers will leave. My throat tightened, but I forced myself to shrug as though it didn't matter. There won't be any more people like you. She said it like I was some exotic animal on the verge of extinction. You must hate me. That was a far cry from what I was feeling, but she didn't want for me to reply as she went on. Everyone here must hate me. Your parents, Zoe, Hewitt, well, maybe not Hewitt. I smiled, though she was clearly serious. But when Hewitt finds out how awful it is on the top side, he'll hate me too, and then... I leaned forward and brushed my lips against hers. Instantly, her eyes went round with surprise, but she didn't pull away, so I pressed my mouth into hers the way I'd wanted to, ever since I'd found her on that dare to lip sub. My insides whirled like a comb jelly, sending off sparks as I savored the softness of her lips. When I finally sat back on my knees, Gemma blinked. Thank you, she whispered. That was not what I'd expected. I might not have much experience with girls, but I knew that thank you was a weird thing to say after a kiss. I know you did it to make me feel better, she went on, and it worked. I do feel better. But if I weren't the only girl down here, the only girl your age, I know you'd... This time I put my hand over her lips to stem the tide of words. I did it because I wanted to, and this seemed like the only chance I'd get. The only chance? Usually your mouth is moving. She shoved me, and I toppled back with a laugh. Next time I'll know when you're about to kiss me and I'll shut up. How will I know? Because her grim was sly. You glow. That's so? My eyes drifted to her lips again. What am I thinking now? Her breath caught, but this time when I kissed her, she kissed back. The specter! Jibby shouted from across the room. Reluctantly, I stood. Gemma, however, drew her knees up as if she was going to stay behind the toolbox forever. I gave her a nudge. Shade was awful to you, so you wouldn't want to live with him. I know, she said in a flat voice. Not because he doesn't want you around, I pulled her to her feet. He wants what's best for you. We faced the enormous window. Outside, the specter hovered like a ghost ship. You don't know that for sure, she muttered. An eerie light flicked on in the specter's darkened plexidome. It was shade, glowing like an apparition inside the sun. His eyes saw and found Gemma. For a moment, neither moved. Holding her in his gaze, shade raised his fist, touched it to his heart, and then vanished like a doused flame. Yeah, I do, I said softly. The specter shot away, and all that remained was its bubble trail. A loud crack broke the silence on the access deck. Did they just fire on the station? Ma gasped. Look! Jibby pointed to the window where a small harpoon trembled, embedded in the plexiglass. Around it, the window spiderwebbed with fractures. How could they shoot that from a sub? Cheryl cried. It's tiny. Hewitt ran closer. It's on the inside! I choked with realization. I choked. After Doc fell into the moon pool, he fired a spear gun at Shade but missed. He must have hit the window. So long as the point hasn't breached the exterior scale, we're fine. Paul hauled the toolbox over to the window and climbed onto it. He peered through the fractured plexiglass to the layer of acrylic scales on the outside, then emitted a string of profanity that was about as uh, obscene as I'd ever heard. They went through, Ma guessed. He went back away from the window. How thick is the scale? When Pa didn't reply instantly, he cried, How thick is the plexiglass? How deep is the point? The exterior scales are four inches thick. Pa climbed off the toolbox. The spear penetrated less than an inch. 
It won't hold, Hewitt said miserably. It doesn't have to hold forever. Cheryl took him in her arms. Just till the rangers, the three-foot scale imploded with a splintering crash. The sea roared in through the opening, blasting us in every direction.